Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson on forces. In this lesson we're specifically going to be focusing on the forces acting on an object on a slope and why those forces contribute to the movement of an object down the slope. Most people understand from everyday experience that if you were to take a frictionless slope, something like an icy hill, and you were to rest, say, a box on it like that, the object would start sliding down the hill. But it would not accelerate down the hill very quickly, certainly not as quickly as it would free fall uh, from the air, and not as quickly as it would if the hill were much, much steeper like that. So we're going to be looking at the physical laws and reasons behind those phenomena. Our first example question involves a box of mass 10 kilograms sitting on a slope with angle 30 degrees. The first challenge is to label all forces. And for this first question we'll say it's frictionless, so there's no resistive force. Our second challenge will be to give the acceleration of that box. And the third challenge will be to give the magnitude of the normal force. So first of all, labelling all the forces. Since this uh, particular picture we can assume is drawn on Earth, the box will have gravity acting on it. So I'll draw the gravity force in there. And the gravity force is given by the mass times the gravitational constant and g at the Earth's surface, at least in Year 12 physics, is taken to be about 10 uh, meters per second squared per kilogram. No, 10, 10 newtons per kilogram, so 10. Just think of it as 10. Uh, the other force that we have is the normal force acting at right angles to the blue surface there. So the blue surface under there, the normal force acts up like so. There's the normal force. And since this box is sitting on a frictionless surface, there is no resistive force. And since there's no uh, part of the question that says it's being driven by anything, there's also no driving force down there. So we only really have those two forces. Now they're asking us to give the acceleration of that box. If the forces balance completely, so say if the box was sitting on a flat surface, the weight force, mg, would be equal to the normal force there. And we'd have a net force of zero, and therefore an acceleration of zero. Looking at this picture, just by looking at it, you can tell those forces aren't going to balance because there's two of them and they're not acting in directly opposite directions. Sorry, I'll say totally opposite directions. There's clearly going to be some net force in that direction there, somewhere pointing that way. Let's figure out uh, what it is. The first thing we need to understand is that we're going to be thinking about motion not in terms of directly up and directly down and horizontal but motion on and off the plane there and motion alongside or parallel to the plane there. We know the box, well we'd be given information in the box saying uh, we know the box is sliding parallel to the plane there. So the first clue is that the sum of the forces in that direction there is zero. The object is not being lifted off the plane and it's not sinking into the plane. The second clue is that if the object is sliding down the plane the sum of forces in that direction is not equal to zero. Let's play around with the gravity force for a second. Since the gravity force is a vector what we can do, and if you don't understand this we covered this in the previous video, uh, what was that? Uh, objects now balancing balancing forces we can turn this gravity force into two different forces uh, which are much much easier to deal with so the first thing I'm going to do is draw a dotted line down here 
in line with the normal force and a dotted line across there. So what I've done is I've made a right angle triangle with a right angle there with this angle up here being equal to 30 degrees. Now this is something it pays to remember. The angle down here is equal to the angle in there. And the angle here is equal to 90, take away that, so that's 60 degrees in there. We won't include that. But just remember this angle here is equal to this angle here. And another way of thinking about that is if I made this angle even bigger, say 60 degrees, and I had a triangle like that, and I had the weight force acting down there, and then I drew the same type of right angle triangle, it's clear that that angle there is getting much bigger than that. So this angle here is getting bigger as this angle is getting bigger, which gives you a clue that they're the same angle. But going back to that right angle triangle we drew, the goal of this right angle triangle is to turn this weight force into two separate forces, which we're allowed to do. So I'm going to put in purple the replacement forces for the weight force. We've got one there and then one there. So this force here is equal to cos 30 degrees because it's adjacent to the angle times mg and this force over here is equal to sine 30 degrees mg. So I've effectively replaced that one weight force there with two other forces but I'm not going to change the behavior of the problem. I, I'm allowed to replace uh, the weight force with two other forces as long as I get their magnitudes and directions right. So now I can go ahead, rub out all this down here, but keeping in my mind what I had drawn, I'm no longer going to think of this box as having that particular weight force there, even though the weight force does exist. I'm going to think of this box as being acted on by those two forces, one there and one there. So the first one was down here, that was cos 30 degrees mg, and the second force was in that direction, but of course I'm going to draw it acting from the center of the object, sine 30 degrees mg. So I've replaced this force here with this force and this force, and I haven't changed the behavior of my object. So now we're getting somewhere. We said that since the object is not moving off the plane like that, the forces must be balanced in that direction. So this force here must balance that force there. Very useful. We also said that the object is accelerating in that direction down the plane. This is the only force which is capable of accelerating the object in that direction there. So this force is going to tell us the acceleration of the object. So the net force in that direction there, up and down the plane, is equal to sine 30 degrees mg, which is equal to a half, m was 10, g was 10, so 50 newtons. The reason we don't include this force or this force in this uh, net force calculation is because they're acting at right angles to that direction, therefore we don't have to include them. We also know that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration, so 50 newtons is equal to 10 kilograms times A, or 50 over 10 is equal to A, 5 meters per second squared is equal to the acceleration. So this force here, which is equal to 50 newtons, is accelerating this block in that direction at 5 meters per second squared. So we've solved part of our question already. The second part, what is the normal, we've hinted at before. Since the object is neither floating off the plane like that, nor going into the plane like that, this force must balance this force. So in other words, the normal force is equal to cos, cos 30 degrees mg, which is equal to root 3 on 2, uh, 10 times 10, which is equal to, I think it's 89, I'll check that, root, 
no, 86.6 newtons. So we can find both the acceleration and the normal force, 86.6. So we'll look at one more question uh, before we end this video. So we maintain the same slope, 30 degrees, but now we'll have a box of mass, I'll delete all this too, mass 5 kilograms, and there is friction between the box and the slope, and the resistive force acts in that direction there. And the final bit of information we're going to get is that we have an acceleration down the plane of 3 meters per second squared. Our goal is to find the resistive force now. So we draw in our, all our forces again. We've got a resistive force, a weight force there, mg, and a normal force acting like that we can change this weight force into two forces of our choosing so we draw that right angle triangle and we have one force there and one force there that would be cos that's 30 degrees in there so cos 30 degrees mg sine 30 degrees mg so we can rub out our weight force now keeping in mind what we've just written and we can say we had one force down there, cos 30 degrees mg, and then sine 30 degrees mg. We know that the net force on this box is equal to mass times acceleration. So the net force parallel to the plane is equal to 5 times 3, 15 newtons. And that 15 newtons must be made up of the force sine 30 mg acting in that direction, sine 30 mg, take away the resistive force, which is actually trying to stop that acceleration. So 15 is equal to a half, 5, 10, take r. 15 is equal to 25, take away r. r is equal to 10 newtons and just because you can stop watching now if you'd like but I'm going to go ahead and find the normal force now the normal force is equal to cos 30 degrees mg which is root 3 on 2 times 5 times 10 which is equal to that'll be half of 86.6 .6, or 43.3. So that's how you resolve uh, the forces of objects on a slope. Really the number one thing that most people struggle with is the idea that instead of working as when a box is sitting flat on the ground and being pulled like that, everyone loves to work in vertical and horizontal, but you've got to get used to working in terms of parallel to the plane of the slope and perpendicular to the plane of the slope. Because once you can get all your forces sitting at right angles like this, everything becomes very easy. So your number one goal of these slope questions should be to take your gravity force, which is awkwardly on an angle like that, and replace it with these two neat forces here.